Hi everybody, this is Joanne and I want to introduce you to three wonderful popular science books and um, books that are just like them but just a little more accessible, which is pretty amazing because all of these authors are marvelous writers and have a marvelous grasp of the topic that they present to you, but then they take it a step further and create a book that's even more accessible. So the first one is of course the seminal book on understanding the universe and time, written by uh, Stephen Hawking, great genius of our time. Um, these, this book it was basically a, lot, a brief history of time. Is, uh, his uh, musings, his theoretical musings about how the universe began, how time works, um, elementary particles, how the universe is expanding, understanding the Big Bang, and maybe what would the end of the universe look like. Um, it was written indeed for the general public, but maybe more for the science enthusiasts than just anybody, and can be a little hard to understand. So Stephen Hawking, being the great popularizer he is, decided to go ahead and create a book that's just a little bit of a step down, and it's called A Briefer History of Time. And this one is definitely beautiful, beautifully done, a little shorter, and has images and diagrams in color uh, to be very attractive to um, you know, the, the reader who might be otherwise a little frightened of the original material. But what if that's not enough? Oh, don't tell me he wrote the briefest history of time. Um, well, no, not exactly. He did write, though, another book um, that's actually two books in one. And the first is the illustrated brief history of time. And the other book included in here is another one of his, The Universe in a Nutshell. Both of these, of course, are beautiful books, but the illustrated version has more illustrations and shorter, more succinct descriptions of what he was trying to discuss in the previous two books. Highly recommend any of these books if you want to tackle this topic of how did the universe begin, what are black holes, or what does Stephen Hawking think about black holes it is. The next author I want to tell you about is just a wonderful author overall. It's author Bill Bryson, and I'm sure you've heard of him at some point. He's written all sorts of books, but he is very well known for a popular science book called A Short History of Nearly Everything. And this book came about um, sort of upon his musings of, well, what are the questions mankind has been asking? Like, how did the universe get here? How did the earth form? How did life start? You know, uh, what's so great about penicillin? How do we discover that? Questions like that all the way through. And he wove it together in a beautiful story, very witty, very funny, very well done. And the way he got his information was to go visit the labs and meet the people who are doing research in all of these areas. So um, definitely, this is the very first book I recommend to anyone who's never, ever read a popular science book. So um, I highly recommend it. But what if you're not quite up to even this much science? Ah, Bill Bryson did a great job by going ahead and composing a book called A Really Short History of Nearly Everything. And of course you can tell by this that this is aimed for children, probably in elementary school, maybe middle school. Uh, lots of images, very short information, but really written in a way that appeals to children or to those of us who are a little afraid of science and want to start somewhere. I highly recommend it. I'm buying it for a very special young man in my life. Uh, and then, finally, the last author is not a scientist. He has an impressive resume of all sorts of things. He is most well known for being a biographer about Benjamin Franklin and Kissinger. And his latest work, published in 2007, that I read poolside, it was my summer read that uh, year, um, is this book called Einstein by Walter Isaacson. And this is Einstein's life and universe. It was beautifully done, got many accolades, as it should have, because this book uh, was well written. You could tell Walter Isaacson just loved Einstein, and he had access to some recently uh, released uh, letters of Einstein. And so, again though, I just found in the bookstore that maybe if you're not quite ready to tackle this book, uh, there is a way to learn about Einstein from the same author in a new, fun way. And it's this book, 
of course, called Einstein, The Life of a Genius, again by Walter Isaacson. And this book basically is a much shorter version of uh, the biography, but it contains uh, letter copies of uh, letters written, copies of press releases, copies of his report card, which according to the children of mine that speak German, uh, was not a good report card. Um, and anyway, so this book is full of images, short paragraphs discussing his findings, his beliefs, his, the people he's met and interacted with, and, um, and then you'll every once in a while find a little pocket where there's a letter you can remove. We'll see if we can do this. Okay, and this, there are several of these throughout the books, um, and this book is a lot of fun. It is beautifully done, of course, and discusses Einstein really succinctly and briefly. So, as you see, people who know how to popularize science know how to reach several different audiences with the same information. I highly recommend any of these books if you are going to go ahead and start reading science books, even if you, you haven't done so up to this point. All right, thank you so much for listening. Bye.